All right. How's it going? I'm Sarah and he's James and we're the Hold or Nothing. We have been back in London, in England now for maybe a week, just over a week. We're in self-isolation so we haven't seen anyone other than our family dropping supplies over the fence to us. Um, and yeah, we're, we're obviously stationary, not travelling at the minute, so we thought it would be a good idea to do a Q&A. <laughs> so we um, put that out on our social media channel. So yeah, here we go. We are going to answer your questions. First one from Travelling My Soul. Starting a blog, dot, 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 what made you want to start your business? I didn't want to start a blog. <laughs> I'll just say that. It was Sarah's idea. <laughs> I didn't want anything to do with it. But then the reason we decided to turn it into a business was because we've been writing for some other bloggers. Yeah. Um, and we've been getting paid for it, which was great. Yeah. We hadn't even really decided to try and turn it into a business mm -hmm. at that stage, but we realised that we could make money from it and obviously seeing that other people were making money from their blogs yeah. we thought it was something that we could do as well. Obviously it allowed us to keep travelling because we didn't want to stop yes. doing that but we didn't have any money to continue doing it, yeah. it's not free obviously. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah that was the kind of turning point wasn't it? Oh there's another question from Amanda, how did you decide to do blogging? So I guess that's a very similar thing, like we kind of just fell into it. Yeah. Yeah. Me, I started it as like a hobby, um, wrote a little bit, it was absolutely terrible, wrote in <laughs> massive paragraphs, really shit at writing back then. <laughs> and um, yeah, we just decided that we, we, we didn't want to stop travelling and it was a way that we could take a business with us on the road. Yeah, exactly. So like, we never clue what we were doing back in the day, did we? I'm not sure we do anymore. <laughs> that is true. Still. Yeah. Four or five years later, but... <laughs> So Carl says, how has the economic impact of coronavirus affected your plans for the business? It's not really affected our plans. Mm. We put together a kind of a, a slightly revised business plan for the year, um, but obviously it has massively affected our business. We make money from our website and the reason that people go to our website is because they're going traveling. Mm -hmm. People aren't travelling at the moment, so no one's going to our website. Yeah. And um, the traffic is pretty much tanked, which means that we're not earning any money, basically, from the site. So, what our plan is, we know that people are going to be travelling in the future. We think that it's something that is still going to continue after this. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's not going to... It's not going to stop travelling, like, we don't know how long it's going to be. Like, it might be three months, it might be six months, it might be a year. Yeah. But... Maybe longer. Yeah, exactly. I don't think it's going to... It's not the end of travel, is it? Exactly. <laughs> so, anyway. The way that it's affected our business plan at the moment is that we're trying to get our website and everything else that we do in order yeah. so that as soon as people do start travelling, it's ready to go and that's it. We yeah. can take off again. Exactly. We've got a huge backlog of stuff that we still need to write about that saves us a lot of time in the future when we can both be travelling again as well that just puts us in so much of a better position. We are lucky enough that while we're back in England we can stay with friends and family, so we don't have a lot of outgoings while we're here anyway. Yeah, that's true. Um, so, yeah, we're just kind of sitting tight. Yeah, fingers crossed everyone can get back to travelling at some <laughs> point in the future. Oh, so this was a, a good question that we got. This is from somebody called Kira. Okay. It says, congratulations, you win an iPhone 11. Reply to claim. Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> that was a question. Oh, yeah, it was on the reply to the question mark. Yes, Kira. I'll put my address down in the description for you. <laughs> Masat, Masat TV. I don't know if it's an actual TV channel. Okay. Anyway, do you like cooking? I love cooking. <laughs> That's the short answer, yes. Um, I cook every day. I cook everything from scratch. I make my own pasta, I make my own sauces, I make, um, look, I just start with the raw ingredients and I make everything that I can, basically. Yeah. Uh, and you? He's really good at it as well. Um, well, I wouldn't say that I don't like cooking. I don't, just don't like doing it. <laughs> no, because you're so good at it and it's really easy for you and I just get really stressed about it because 
it's just so many things to remember and I'm okay doing like one meal that's quite simple but if I have to cook different things in different times and all that kind of stuff like yeah. something gets burned, I make a big mess, blah blah blah, it's just easier if you do it. From Nico, what is your favourite book to read? Probably my favourite book is a book called Post Office by uh, an author called Charles Bukowski. I didn't think that was going to be your favourite one. No. Like I know it is now, but I thought you were going to say Shantaram. Well, yeah, Shantaram, in terms of travel books, that's yeah. definitely up there for me. The reason why I like it as a travel story is because the descriptions of India are just so rich. Like the food, the smells, the sights, the colours, um, the language, everything is just fantastic. So it makes you want to get back back on and go to India straight away pretty much. Like it did in a sleep last night. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> last night. <laughs> he nearly fell out of bed because he was having a dream that he was in India. What were you doing in India? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favourite book? It's a really sad book actually. Yeah? Yeah. So there's a book called um, When Broken Glass Floats. It's basically about the um, genocide that happened in Cambodia with the Khmer Rouge and it's a girl telling the experience of what happened like with her family and her brothers and sisters and her mum and dad and like it's just really 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 heart-wrenchingly sad like it just made me cry like the whole way through. Okay. And I, know, <laughs> I know that sounds a bit terrible in terms of like um, a favourite book however I really like watching films or reading books that evoke that kind of emotion from you. From Pache, what were you guys doing before travelling? I was an HR manager and the actual work itself I wasn't in love with. However, the industry was pretty fun to be in. It was the pubs and bars industry. So I spent a lot, a lot of time in pubs and bars. So I used to manage a team of about 20 people that you saw after older and vulnerable people in the community and yeah for, for that reason it was really rewarding but it was just it was just full on because it was 24-7. When I left I was just like <sighs> <laughs> Amanda wants to know where did you two meet? It's, it's pretty corny I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Uh, Sarah was working as a waitress in a cocktail bar. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> it's actually true. Um, but it was where I, I was living in a shared house with two of my mates and they both worked in that bar. So I used to spend quite a lot of time in there. After I finish work, I go down there. Sometimes I go down there on lunchtime. I was just going to say during work. As well. <laughs> during work. Um, work. Yeah, because I used to get really good discounts. So sometimes they'd slip me a free beer or something like yeah. that. So I spent a lot of time in there and that's where we met and that's where we got to know each other. That's it. Here's another personal one. I don't even know the answer to this really. Um, so Tony wants to know, how do you spend so much time together? <laughs> Tony. Um, yeah, that is a good question. I don't know. It's really weird as well because yeah. obviously before we started travelling, we never spent anywhere near this amount of time together. When we first started travelling, we were travelling so it was just really exciting and we, and we weren't working and it was just kind of like, yeah. it was fun and it was easy and stuff and then I think things were slightly more difficult when we started like getting our serious sets on about the business and we, we kind of worked really hard to separate kind of our professional relationship and our personal relationship. That's true actually, I've forgotten so, about that because we had quite a lot of different ideas on the direction of where, <laughs> where the blog should go and how to do things. Not like, but just No, like, it was only about the business yeah. as well. But I think once we sorted all of that out and we were both on completely the same page with the yeah. blog and the business, then everything else just fell into place really. We, we have very different roles within the business as well. So some of the stuff does overlap quite a lot but during the working day we don't really talk to each other that much that's true yeah like we have business meetings that but we'll quite often like be in the same apartment or the same house but working like completely separately yeah and for like six seven eight hours a day yeah not actually talk to each other so that probably helps there you go <laughs> we don't talk to each other <laughs> that's how we spend so much time together Alex says, what annoys you about each other? Oof, how long have we got? <laughs> <laughs> I think okay. there's loads of stuff that annoys 
annoys you about me, but I don't think there's much the other way around. Right, I think I can wrap it all up into one thing though. Okay, go on. Okay. Then. It's like living with a teenage child sometimes. A teenage child? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah's really, really messy and I'm not. So <laughs> I spend half of my day picking up after her and you know, moving things around, tidying things up. Cooks all the meals. Exactly. So um yeah, that. I'm always late. Yes. Never on time for anything. Yeah, this is true. Oh no no no, I know what it is. I know what it is. <laughs> I know what it is. So how you very rarely get that excited over anything. Okay. So like I can be like bouncing off the walls, like, yes, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this, blah blah blah. And he's like, yeah, cool. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, but are you not excited about that? He's like, yeah, it'd be great. Like, what do you mean? It can be like the most exciting thing in the world. It means for like, yeah. yeah, but the way that I see it, okay, is that it's a way to um, keep on a level. If you get excited, then you have to come down. And, you know, if that excitement doesn't lead to exactly what you're expecting it to be, then you're going to be way down there. That is the key difference between us. This is me. <laughs> this is Jay. Next question. Marcia says, are you enjoying being back home? Um, yeah, we're really relieved to be back home. Yeah. We're so happy that we made the decision to come back as well, because we know that some people, well, in fact, quite a lot of people messaged us and said, you're probably better off where you are. And we completely got what they were getting at. Yeah. If you don't know what we're on about, go back and watch the Peru lockdown videos. Yeah. Maybe not all of them. This is <laughs> one for every day. Often the 15 days that it happens. Numbers one, three, seven, <laughs> and 15. Those are the good ones. The only thing that I would say is that we've gone straight into another 14 day lockdown. So I wouldn't say we're enjoying being back yeah. because it's exactly the same. It doesn't matter where you're doing lockdown, yeah. really. You're doing lockdown. One of the things for me is the reason we come back to England is to spend time with our friends and family. Yeah. So while we can't at the minute, I'm just feel like this shit. But obviously everyone's yeah. in the same boat, I'm not complaining about that. It's a very different circumstance as to why we would normally be back in yeah. England. And it, obviously it wasn't just for that this time, it was for our safety as well. Yeah. So yeah, kind of, I, don't, I haven't really figured out about that to be honest. I think I'll feel different maybe when we finish this 14 days and we can actually go outside for a little bit yeah. on our 30 minutes exercise, <laughs> if we're still allowed to do that. Saski says, what don't you like about travelling? Okay, I've got a really specific thing that I hate about travelling and it is bathrooms that you get in a lot of places, <laughs> right? No, but this is serious though, isn't it? Okay, so bathrooms are not the same the world over. You know, some things are better in some countries, like Japan have amazing toilets yeah, with true. heated seats, you know, some of them play music. Um, but the thing that annoys me the most about bathrooms is showers. And the things that annoys me the most about some showers is that they don't have shower curtains and that they don't have any way of separating the shower from the rest of the bathroom. So you're having a shower, the water's spraying everywhere, you know, the toilet paper's getting soaked, the whole of the floor is getting soaked. It's just ridiculous. Just put a shower curtain up. Problem solved. <laughs> We've been in some other even where the shower's like over the toilet. On top of the toilet. <laughs> you pretty much have to sit on the toilet to have a shower. <laughs> Absolutely crazy. You see, I don't get annoyed about that. I just think it's quite funny, but if we're, like you walk into somewhere and you're like, that's it. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Packing my bag. <laughs> because I'm so rubbish at it. You'd think after four years I'd have a system, but I kind of do sometimes, but then like, I just don't even know. The problem that you have though is that you have your packing cubes, which are fine, then you've just got loads of little bits and pieces that are not in anything. And the thing is, I never allow myself your time either. So I'm always like rushing, rushing, rushing. And he's Wait. like, say, you know the taxi's gonna be here in five minutes. And I'm like, ah! And then I end up sweating and just feel a mess then for whatever journey we're going on and yeah, that part of it is not my favourite. Nana says, what is your favourite country? My favourite place was China and the reason for that was it was just so different to anywhere that I've ever been. Yeah. Culturally, um, out of this world. Yeah. The, the food. food was incredible. <laughs> <laughs> and 
I think something that's not normally associated with China necessarily, the scenery, the landscapes are just unbelievable. Yeah. And they've got everything, you know, from snow and places that are freezing pretty much all year round to mountains, you know, the ones that Avatar were based yeah, on and yeah, things yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, and like tropical yeah, rainforest yeah, kind of places. Beaches and stuff yeah. like that. It's just so diverse. It was the first place that we went to. After our year of travel, we came back to England and we were like, right, we're going to keep travelling, we've got to get Navy's work. We booked some tickets to Mexico without a plan. We yeah. jumped on the plane and we were like, okay. And we travelled all around, didn't we? Like, went to yeah. loads and loads and loads of Mexico, um, met some amazing people, and just the food there. You can just get food everywhere. Yeah. And because I get hungry quite a lot, but I don't eat a lot. If that makes sense. Like, it was just perfect for me because I'd be like, yep, I'm hungry, <laughs> get a taco. And then half an hour later, yep, hungry again, get another taco. Um, Ash says, what impact do you think the virus will have on tourism? I think it's going to be quite slow to start with when people can travel again. I don't think it's just going to explode overnight. Yeah, because at the minute it just fell off a cliff, didn't it? Everyone is going to be affected economically, so it's going to take a while for people to get money to be able to travel. Yeah. And, you know. Although it depends because we have got some friends who their job isn't affected by what's happened. Either they can work from home just carry on as normal, or they work from home anyway, or they're in a business sector that is doing really well from it. And because they're not going out and spending money and eating out and all these kind of things, and they can't go on holiday, they're actually saving money. Yeah, that's so true. I think it depends on, for a lot of people, you're right. Another way that I think it's going to affect it though is that I think people are going to start trying to live their best lives a bit more, starting to reprioritize. I yeah. think travel is something that's always on people's um, list of things to do. It's, if you ask a lot of people, they say, you know, what do you want to do with your life? Travel is something that's always quite hard, yeah. and yet a lot of people don't actually go to the places that they've always dreamt of going to. I think you're right, I think it'll be bigger than ever. But that's international tourism as well. So another yeah. thing is is like domestic tourism. Yeah. I think for us, probably one of the things that we're going to do as soon as we are able to start travelling, is start seeing a bit more of the UK. Jen wants to know, how much did you save up to go travelling with? So this is the first the first year, time, I the first year. I think it was a little bit more, I think it was about 23,000. Yeah. yeah. And, but we came back with a little bit as well because we bought our laptops when we got, got back. Yeah. So it was probably about 20,000 that we spent. 12 months travel. We went to a lot of South America, China, Japan, um, and a lot of Southeast Asia. We travelled really quickly yeah. on that year, and it's a lot more expensive to travel quickly, so we needed a lot more money for that. If you move in places every two or three days, yeah. that costs a lot of money. Um, Travelling is slower if you're staying in places for a month, two months, three months, or in Mexico where we spent eight months, we spent nothing anywhere near yeah, that. Yeah, that's the thing, we don't spend that much these days. I could have gone up in a Yeah, probably. 20 grand, mate. 23, 20, 23, 25 thousand pounds. <laughs> From Sizzly. I don't think I'm saying that right. Sizzly, good name. Um, and this was actually written in Romanian. So I had to translate oh, really? it, yeah. So okay. I hope that it's right, and if it's not, <laughs> I apologise. So Google, Google translates for me. So what place could I visit in Romania? This is from a Romanian person, or it's written in Romanian? It's written in Romanian, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've only been to one place in Romania. Yeah. So we've been to Bucharest, and we loved it. We went there by accident because we were actually in Rome and it was too expensive so we got a really cheap flight out of there <laughs> and we went to Bucharest and spent, I don't know, a month there maybe or something. But I do want to go back because I want to go to some of those um, castles. Yeah, like Transylvania. Transylvania, that's the one, yeah. So, haven't been. But I would recommend going there because that's where we want to visit. Ella says, before learning Spanish or in places that don't speak Spanish, how do you navigate the language barrier? You just do. You just point, hand gestures, yeah. um, a smile goes a long, long way. It's easier in some countries than others, like in Thailand, Vietnam, Cambodia, like those places. 
there were was more people that spoke English. But then in places like China, where it's not even the same alphabet, yeah. there's just a lot of help from people like the hostels that we stayed in. I remember them writing down. So you tell them where you were going to go for the day, and they'd write down the names, like the characters on a piece of paper, so and tell you which bus to get on. So then when you were on the bus, you would literally just be trying to match the symbols with the bus stop so that you know where yeah. you want to, to get off at. In Japan, Japan was amazing. Like You'd just be stood like in the bus station trying to figure it out, and you remember all the school kids that were yeah. for us? They'd be like, because they wanted to practice English as well, <laughs> but they'd come over and be like, can I help you? Like, what do you need to know? Yeah, so, yeah. so sweet. I think if you're looking a bit lost, someone will generally help you. Yeah. <laughs> as long as you've got down like a dodgy dark alley. <laughs> <laughs> Where they'll take advantage of you. We always try and learn, even if it's just a few words yeah. and a little bit of the language of the place that we're going to. So. Hello, please, thank you, goodbye, that kind of thing is the real basics that you can do. Attempt, even if you butcher it, if you murder it, they're really happy that you've made a go. Yeah, definitely. I remember someone said to me when we were in town that I had a really good Thai accent, actually. <laughs> do you not remember that? I do remember that. <laughs> and also, I went to count to 10 in Romania when we were in Romania. Did you? Do you remember that, you? Yeah. No. But I've forgotten it now. Yeah, you, you just find ways to get by. Like, I wouldn't let that put you off going anywhere. Just go traveling, asked. Interested how fluent you are in Spanish and what you think was the main contribution other than being in a Spanish speaking country. The thing that really stepped it up for us, other than being in South America, was that we have a Spanish teacher. So she lives in Bolivia in Sucre. In terms of our fluency, we watched a film in Spanish two nights ago yeah, we for did. the first time. Um, we watched it in Spanish and we had Spanish subtitles as well. And we understood it. Yeah, we did. I don't know whether that makes you fluent or not. I wouldn't actually say that we're fluent. No. Um, it depends on what situation we're in. Yeah. We can have conversations with yeah. people and we do have a lot of conversations with people. That's another thing that really advances your learning, I think. Um, however, there are bits and pieces that we still get stuck on, words that we don't know, plenty of them. Yeah. And sometimes accents can catch us out as well. Because we have learnt to speak Spanish in South America, Latin America, we struggle with Spanish Spanish. So in Spain, in Madrid for example, we're like, what? <laughs> this is a different language. Yeah, it like, is. We can pretty much understand everything that is said in a Bolivian accent, in a Venezuelan accent, Colombian, Mexico, Argentina. It's a little bit tricky because the accent's really fast and really crazy there, same as Chile. That's mainly Buenos Aires, but um, yeah, That's Chile, true. Chile's a bit wild. It's a bit rapid. Yes. It still takes a lot of effort for us to speak Spanish. It's not something that comes naturally. Like, I have to turn my Spanish brain on to be able to speak and listen in Spanish. That's it. That's it? Yeah. Wonderful. That's all the, all the questions. Cool. <laughs> so, now you know everything about us. <laughs> if you have got any other questions, put them in the description below. <laughs> yeah, we might do another one of these. I um, think we should do them regularly. Yeah? You think yeah. so? Okay. Yeah. That'll be fun. Yeah. So give us your questions below, guys, and we will answer them in the next Q&A session that we do. See ya. Bye.